Are you looking forward to the auctions of coming from treasuries? Will they go okay, or are you a little bit worried that they, they may show a little bit of uneasiness? I don't, I'm looking forward to it. I'm, I can't wait. I'm holding my breath, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, to be quite honest, I, I don't think much is going to happen here. I think we've reached a, an interesting level at the 10-year. Um, and what I find even more interesting is I think that the, uh, the yield curve has flattened to the extent it has, because the five years, you know, at 260, 265, 255 over the last couple of weeks, that's really been an interesting move. And I don't think that the yield curve um, is going to steepen from here uh, without any further action at the short end. Okay, wh what does that mean? Could it get messy from here? Uh, well, it's got messy already, hasn't it? And, um, and, but and I, quickly. I think it's good messy because we've been saying for a while we need more volatility. Yeah. Um, that's healthy. Uh, you know, we had we had such a risk on trade for for so many years with the you know the Fed put and and, and all that. So I think I think it's got a bit messy, but it's corrected itself, and we're, we're now looking forward to more volatility. And that, of course, means in terms of if you're an active investor in the markets, it means more opportunity for us to generate alpha. Uh, uh, Andreas, where does the volatility come from? So this is a very simple S&P 500 chart. We brought it back to uh, 2014. This was, without a doubt, my chart of the week uh, a couple of weeks ago. And you can see, so every time you see a circle, it's a 5% correction downwards, okay. right? And then you can see the S&P 500 kind of upward, upward trajectory. It was going up nicely, and then we had what happened a couple of weeks ago. Does this, you know, do you think there's more volatility to come in equities, or does it spread to the credit market? Well, that's the, the, whether, this, whether this volatility is spread to the credit market is the $64 million question. I think it depends on the uh, health of the underlying economy, to be honest, rather than short-term interest rates. We're quite constructive on that. We have a sort, of a, a sort of Goldilocks scenario globally with sort of global aggregate demand sort of picking up quite a bit and also investment picking up. So I'm not too worried at, at, about that at this stage. But if we look at that chart, what that's really telling you is that we went up too fast. Right. Um, our, our estimate was for the year equity returns from start to the end about 4%. Um, so we've got a bit more to go from where we are today, but certainly the sort of 10, 12, 13% move that we saw in January was overdone. But this is what pent up tranquility. Yeah. Right, that then burst exactly. at some point. So how do you, I don't know what you, know, what you see as a, as a signal that it could spread to the credit market. So are you ready to, to basically take away your position if it does spread to credit? No, I, I, think, I think the signal would be a significant weakening of global, global economic activity. We don't see that at the moment. So I think we're going to see credit be quite healthy for the majority of this year. Okay, what does that mean so for your investment? I mean, are, are we going back to active investment? Well, we've, we've never left, left it, really. But what it does mean is that, and we've seen that come through in the numbers in, in 2017 already, active managers have done much better generating alpha in 17 than in the preceding three to five years. So that's really good news. But what it means for us is really we continue to take risk. Asset allocation risk, currency risk, we talked about that on previous shows, and, and, of, course, and of course credit risk. And, you know, we like Asian markets. Andreas, financial repression, you were one of the first ones years ago that came on the show to talk yeah. about it. What does it mean in 2018? It's, it's as relevant as ever because real interest rates are still negative. Inflation is picking up faster, arguably, than interest rates so far have picked up at the short end. So we've still got ultra-loose monetary policies. And that's, that really means that the key challenge that we've got as investment professionals is how do we secure the real income, the real purchasing power of the people who invest with us. But is 2018 not, not the pivot year where you actually, you know, almost see the beginning of the end of easy money? The, well, y yes, it's the pivot year. We've certainly seen the peak of ultra-loose monetary policy, but it doesn't mean that we're going to have tight monetary policy in 2019. You know, as inflation rises and interest rates catch up, real interest rates are still going to be negative or barely, barely at zero. So we're not, we're far off from positive real interest rates, particularly in Europe and Japan. When will we get positive real interest rates? I mean, is this like two, three years down the line or can it take even longer? It'll take a very long time in Japan. I don't know when we'll get there. In Europe, it's probably at least two to three years off. And in the US, I'd say at least, at least 15 months. Okay, are, are you worried that the 15 months scenario kind of coincides with a, d a downturn in the economy? I don't know whether it's uh, a crisis or something that actually puts the central bank in a very difficult position. Yes, I worry about it, but it's not keeping me up at night because I've got to invest today. And until I see incontrovertible evidence of the contrary, I think we're, st we're staying for now with our relatively benign scenario. Okay, so where do you see the biggest value? And actually, I want to ask you about, about German bonds, because if these reprice quickly, is this the biggest risk to European equities? Uh, it's a big risk, but I don't see that happening. Um, uh, I think the, uh, the, you know, the tightening at the ECB is going to happen primarily at the short end, so we're going to see a flattening, um, mm -hmm. if anything, of the yield curve. Uh, I think there's value probably at the, 
at the five-year um, end of the U.S. Treasury market. I think 2.5% with inflation at 25 that's, that's pretty good. We see value in, in Asian um, debt. Uh, local currencies in Asia are very cheap. Um, I see some value in the yen and the, and the euro. I've talked about that before. We're seeing that sort of, we're seeing that sort of come through a little bit. Uh, so I'd, I'd, if I was in U.S. assets, I'd hedge the U.S. dollar out. I know that we're at, there's a lot of U.S. dollar shorts out there. So in the short term, we might see a little bit of a recovery. But I think in the, on a 6 or 12 months basis, you're going to lose money in the U.S. dollar. So hedge it. Um, and, then, and then I think, you know, it continues to be the case that, um, that equities with strong free cash flow generation and strong earnings growth will probably uh, keep their rating.